How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made these jack-o'-lanterns. Um, I've never had time to make these kind of uh, trendy seasonal things before, but I have some time on my hands this year, so I decided to make them, and we'll see how well they do. If you want to see how I made them, then stick around, because that's what we're going to do today. Okay, so these are just made out of cedar fence pickets. They are like $3 each in my area. Um, and then I also used some dowels for the the stems on top, just to make them look neat. But anyway, um, and then I bought some of these little battery operated lights from Amazon. A hundred of them were like $25, $30, something like that. They flicker and they go inside and they look really cool, which I'll show you here at the end of the video. When we're done, you can see what they look like. But uh, anyway, um, they're pretty simple to make. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can make these. People use jigsaws, people use scroll saws, people use CNC's. Now I do have a CNC, but um, I did not make these with the CNC for a couple of reasons. One, I realized that by the time I got the stock set up in here and get everything set up and let it cut for 10 minutes, however long it took, you know, I mean, it's just as fast for me to do it on the scroll saw. And besides that, um, a lot of you guys don't have a CNC. A scroll saw is much more attainable than a CNC is. And I recently got mine not too long ago, and I've never really used it. So I decided I wanted to figure it out. So uh, that's the way I did it with the scroll saw. And as you see, they came out pretty good. But uh, anyway, check it out. Let me show you how I made them. So the first step for me was to plane the boards down to get rid of that fuzzy, rough sawn looking exterior on them. Now, this step isn't absolutely necessary especially if you're going for as rustic a look as you can get. But I just prefer to work with smoother surfaces. I don't want to get a bunch of splinters, and I certainly don't want anybody that buys these to get any either. Plus, it's just easier to work with them and get good seamless joints that are easier to assemble with them smooth like this. Even though it gives them a nice smooth finish, I can still make them look pretty rustic through the burning process, as you'll see shortly. You don't need a planer for this either. Some 80 grit sandpaper and a random orbital sander will make relatively easy work of these in just a few minutes. But like most, I'm not super fond of sanding, especially if I'm going to batch these out and need to smooth out 25 to 50 boards. So I prefer to just use the planer. I just used very light passes until they were smooth enough for my liking as these boards are not really thick to begin with and you don't want to let them get too thin or it's going to be a heck of a challenge to shoot the brad nails into them without getting a bunch of blowouts so keep that in mind as well. Next I moved over to the miter saw to cut the front, back and sides of the lanterns to length. You can make these as tall or as short as you prefer, but 10 inches looked good to me, so that's what I went with. Once those were cut, I took them over to the table saw to rip them to width. Again, you can make these as wide, square, or rectangular as you want. I decided I wanted them to be more rectangular than square to make sure that all of the edges were straight and squared so that the butt joints would go together nice and easily and I also wanted to leave the front and back of the box as wide as possible in order to give myself plenty of space for cutting out the faces. So I trimmed a hair off of both sides of the front and back pieces to a final width of five and a quarter inches from a starting width of about five and a half for the boards and ripped the side pieces down to three and a half inches. Finally, I took the cutoffs and ripped them down to seven eighths of an inch wide strips to use later as the edges for my tops. As for the faces, I spent a couple of dollars and bought files for something like 100 jack-o'-lantern faces on Etsy. There are several people that sell these files and they are generally very inexpensive. The ones I got came with PNG, PDF, uh, SVG, and DXF files, I think. So I can use them as either images like I did here or still have the option to use them on the CNC later as well, if I so choose. I just used the PNG files, printed them as 5x7 images, and then just wrapped them around the boards and secured them with a little painter's tape. This way, I could use them as a template 
to follow when cutting them out on the scroll saw. Once I had them on the boards, I took them over to the drill press to make some starter holes and then cut them out on the scroll saw. Like I said, this was my first time using my scroll saw and there is some nuance to getting a good cut and staying in the lines, but I got comfortable with it pretty quickly and was able to get really good results. It can be a little tricky to keep parts of the template in place the more you cut, but it wasn't unmanageable for me. I feel like it's easier to deal with that than it is to stick the whole thing down with spray adhesive or something and then fight to get it all back off without leaving a bunch of residue on the board or having to use other chemicals. I tried a couple of different blades, but I found that I preferred using the spiral blades as you can cut in any direction and make sharp curves and sharp angled cuts with relative ease by simply changing the direction you're pushing once you get the hang of it. Keeping straight lines is more difficult with this blade, at least it was for me, but if you go out of bounds a little on one, you can just do the same for the other side if you want them to be symmetrical. Once I got them cut out, I spent some time cleaning up the cuts with some 80 grit sandpaper. Again, the cedar is soft and it's really easy to remove a lot of material with minimal effort. But after doing several like this, I got pretty good at using the scroll saw itself to clean up the cuts and ended up needing to do very little, if any, sanding once I got the hang of it. After that, I was ready to assemble the boxes, which is pretty easy and straightforward. I just used a little wood glue and some one inch brad nails. You can probably get away without using glue at all for these and I've seen people do that, but it just takes a second to put some on and it gives you the peace of mind of knowing that they won't be coming apart very easily. What you have to be careful about here is where you put the brad nails and how you shoot them. Make sure you stay clear of your cutouts or you might shoot a nail right into one of those spaces. Trust me, I know. And because the stock is on the thinner side, you'll need to make sure your nail gun is as level as you can get it and perpendicular to the bottom piece that you are shooting into in order to help avoid blowouts. I found the easiest way for me to do this was to angle it ever so slightly so that the nail would angle toward the inside of the box because if you have to repair a blowout on the inside, it's not quite as bad as having to do it on the outside where it's much more visible. I made a bunch of these and both of those happened to me, which can be pretty frustrating, but it's not a project killer if it does happen. If I could, I just pushed the nail back out and reshot it. Again, the cedar is super soft and this is not really difficult to do. If the nail was only protruding out just a tiny bit and I couldn't do that without causing more damage than it was worth, I just used a small punch to tap the end of the nail and bend it until it sank into and below the surface of the wood. On the inside of the box, you can just leave it like that. On the outside, I just filled the hole or the blown out area with some sawdust, added some thin CA glue, sprayed it with activator, and then sanded it down nice and smooth. Once the stain is applied, it looks just like another rustic feature. Once I got the main box assembled, I cut the top and base pieces to length on the miter saw and then ripped them to width on the table saw just like the box pieces. For the bases, I made them one inch longer and wider than the box so that they would extend out a half an inch on all sides. And for the tops, I made them just a hair larger than the length and width of the box, something like a sixteenth of an inch, so that they would fit and remove easily once assembled. And I used those 7 8 inch strips that I had made earlier to make the edges of the lid. Just like the main box, I assembled the top with a little glue and some brad nails. Instead of taking the time to precisely measure and cut all of the edges to the perfect size, I found it much more convenient to just use extra long pieces on the long edges and then trim the short ones for the sides in small increments on the miter saw until they just fit between the overhanging longer edges. Once I got all four sides installed, I just trimmed those long edges flush with the miter saw. For me, this was the easiest, most efficient way to do it. Finally, I installed the base using a little glue and brad nails like everything else. In order to get the nails in the right place, once I got the box lined up and glued where I wanted it, I carefully flipped it over so that the base was facing up. Then I held a scrap piece in place at the edge of the box underneath the base. 
and then measured in from the edge of the base to the center of that scrap piece. I used that measurement to mark where I needed to drive the nails in using the same technique as before to get them right in the middle of the board when I put them in. Once everything is assembled, it's time to apply the finish. Like I said before, I used my torch and burned the outside of the box to give it that rustic look. I have a whole video dedicated to how to do this, and I'll leave a link to it in the description for you if you haven't seen it yet. I did the best I could to burn the inside of the cutouts, and this ended up having the unintended but very welcome consequence of giving a darker burn around the cutouts on the outside face of the box, which gives it this cool, ominous looking effect once it's stained, which is perfect for, you know, the Halloween thing. You just have to be careful not to overdo it because again, the cedar is soft and it will burn pretty easily. I would suggest you keep a damp cloth on hand to put out any small embers and hot spots before they burn too much. Once you get it all burned, you're ready to apply the stain. I did this one in orange because it's meant to be a jack-o'-lantern, but I also did a few in white that are meant to resemble ghosts. I also plan on doing some possibly later in green that kind of have like a Frankenstein face on them, as well as maybe a black one in the semblance of a cat. But uh, you can really use whatever color you feel looks best with your chosen design. The final thing I wanted to do, the so-called cherry on top as it were, was to add something resembling a pumpkin stem that would also serve as the handle for the top. I just happened to have a bunch of 7 8 inch dowels in my scrap wood cart left over from another project, which worked perfectly for this application. I just cut them down to one and a half inch long pieces on the miter saw, put a quick burn on them, and then stain them green. To install them, I just pre-drilled a hole and countersink in the center of the inside of the top, and then pre-drilled a hole in the center of the finished stem piece. Then I just used a little bit of glue and a one inch screw to attach it to the top, and it worked out great. I was super happy with the way these came out. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you could do me a favor, I'd really appreciate it. Like, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. I will, in a later video, let you guys know how well these did sell or didn't sell and um, give you more information on that as well as the little shot caddies that I made. The uh, other three videos for my How to Sell Your Stuff series is, are coming very soon after this one, hopefully. Um, plus, I've got a couple of you know new tool videos coming too. So I actually have a lot planned in the next four to six weeks. So if you want to see any of those videos, you got to uh, hit the bell notification and subscribe so that you're notified when uh, I put them out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Happy woodworking. See you next time.